Yes, welcome, welcome to the first episode of Quick Wit. What's your CQ? We are bringing you a very exciting format where we will test, we will test your CQ. Now we all know about an intelligence quotient. We know about an emotional quotient, but a CQ is something that I feel combines both of them because it tests your emotional aspect for the game, obviously, and it also tests your intelligence or rather the knowledge of the game. And we, as cricket lovers, who sit outside the ground and we've collected all that knowledge, so we thought in this lockdown period, with a lot of people staying home, why not test your cricketing knowledge? Now, here's what we are going to do, and I will explain to you the format. Ketan Patel has joined in. Hello. And there are a lot of other people joining us live on our Facebook and YouTube page. <coughs> so we will tell you exactly what's going to be this show. So I will be the quiz master from now. My name is Mishal. And today I have challenged my friends at the Cherry and Timber Talk to take this quiz. So it is Venu all the way from Canada. Mahesh And Yogesh from London. So we've got these participants today and we are going, I've challenged them today, but in future, you too can join this quiz and I will tell you how. But first up, let me explain to you the rules, how I'm going to ask the questions and how our participants are going to answer. So first and foremost, let me tell you that I will be showing the questions on screen. Suresh Menon has joined in. Hi Suresh, thank you so much for joining us. And yes, I know you will be able to get a lot of those answers. Ishan has also joined us. Hi Ishan. Now, <coughs> talking about the format, 30 questions for you guys. And remember that it's an app-based question, right? So the yep. question will appear on your screen along with four options. Now, one of the questions will be an arrangement where you have to arrange the events chronologically. So mm -hmm. there's a time limit for every question. The faster you answer, the more points you get. So you look at the question on your screen, look at the app on your phone, the Kahoot app, and then pick your answer. And once you pick your answer, the faster you are, the better the lead you get over your other competitor. So to start things off, let me also tell you that the game is divided into a few phases, just like one day cricket. So we are going to start with power play one, which will have 15 questions, a few easy ones, just giving you with the field inside the ring. I think a few big hits can be allowed. Then as we move to power play two, which is from question number 16 to 25, questions are a little bit, uh, I would say, okay, they aren't very difficult. They aren't very easy. So it's a consolidation period. Maybe you can just knock the ball around take a few singles, keep wickets in hand for the all important slog overs, which is from question number 26 to question number 30. Remember, the faster you get, the more points you get. And for these questions, on top of it, what happens is that you get double the points. Whoa. So you get to maximize points in the slog overs. So a question wow. that will give me a thousand points in the first two rounds can give you a maximum of 2000 points in the last wow. round. Yeah, exactly. It's Can like going for everything. Be a Kyron Pollard, be a Harvard Pandya, be any big hitter that you want in those last five questions. Can we play the smart logos first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I that is Brendan McCallum getting channelized, Venu. <laughs> exactly. Bring but it on first off. Right now, let me also tell the audience how they can participate. You can obviously answer questions below. You may say that some of these people will be able to search on Google. They might, but then in searching on Google, they will lose on important time and that will mean lesser points. Also, I will at the end of power play number one and power play number two, I will ask you questions, three questions each, and whoever gets all of them right has a chance to be invited later onto our show as participants and we will have you on screen just as we have Venu, Mahesh and Yogesh today. So guys, are you ready for the quiz? Bring it on. Ready? <laughs> Already? Yes. yes. So we've got so we've got the quiz which will start for you now. Let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> can you see guys this? Can you see all your three names? Yes, we can. So we've we got Yogesh, Yogesh, Venu. Awesome. Trick with episode one starts right now. Shall I start, gentlemen? Yep. Yes. Go for it. 
let's play okay. then all right here we go as you can see indian team celebrates question number 1 which team has won the most ipl titles that's right it's the mumbai indians they have won four titles 2013 2015 2017 2019 all in alternate years and chennai super kings have won three titles they are number 2 on the list kkr have won two sunrisers have won one now let's have a look at the scores right it's neck and neck venu leading the pack by just 20 points gentlemen ready for the next question let's go all right question number 2 Who was the leading run scorer of the IPL 2008? Shane Watson, Sean Marsh, Michael Hussey, Matthew Hayden. Come on, guys! I've got two. Yes, that's right. It is Sean Marsh. Marsh hadn't played for Australia. He made his debut after the IPL 2008. 616 runs that season. The other Australians also did well. Watson was the man of the tournament, but Marsh made a huge impression. Mm -hmm. So Venu and Mahesh are neck and neck now. In fact, they're equal nine one nine five three points. Yogesh, come on, you've got to catch up with them. Here's your chance. I think uh, they they run really well between the wickets. How many ODIs did the great Sir Gary Sobers play? Oh my God, that's a tough <laughs> this, one. This I think I'm sure. Of. Okay. Wish you could play more though. He played only one ODI in 1973, which was during the tour of England. And it's a pity that we didn't get to see such a great player playing that game. Otherwise, we know how effective he would have been. The greatest wow. of greats. Now, I can't believe are. these two guys knew oh, the answer. Oh, oh, <laughs> this was a fluke, guys. Tell me, fluke. this was a fluke. <laughs> Guys, guys, whatever. Uh, this is what it's and these are early days. Of course, you've got to capitalize later. It's yeah. just one ODI that he's played. Yeah. Question number four: Who served as manager of the Pakistan team during their victorious 1992 World Cup and 2009 World T20? A lucky charm for them, as you can see, that is Shahid Afridi during the 2009 World T20 final. Uh, an important 50 by him. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. Right. I've got two answers. Is the third? That's right. It is Intigar Palam, yep. who was one of their main players, starting in the 1950s, <coughs> finishing in the 70s, and right now he was a lucky charm for them in 92 and the 2009 World T20. Hmm. Right? Everyone got it right. I think that's yeah. fairly good. Uh -huh. Moving on to the next question. Question number five: Which of the following was a nickname of the great Steve Waugh? Was it Swampy, Oswald, Audi, or Taga? Oh, that's an easy one, isn't it? Yeah. Taga. Very Taga. easy. <laughs> yeah. Who was Audi? The, gentlemen, the other three nicknames, which Aussie players had them? Audience, you can also tell us. Uh, Audi, I believe, was uh, not Ravi Shastri. Hopefully, it was uh, Mark Waugh. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. Mark Waugh. Mark Waugh is right. Mark Waugh was was uh, Audi because he got four ducks in a row and. The joke in the Australian dressing room was that if he got a fifth one, he would be an Olympian because five zeros make the Olympic <laughs> Olympic logo. And awesome. the other two, I mean, Swampy was Jeff Marsh, which is why Sean Marsh is called SOS, that is son of Swampy. And Oswald, right. yeah, and Oswald was Brett Lee because when Steve Waugh was once writing the team sheet down, he wrote Shane Lee, Ian Harvey, and then it was Brett Lee. So instead, so that it is Lee Harvey Oswald. The mm. man who assassinated uh, the Kennedy. President Kennedy. So that's what it was. Just a very short one. So we've got a lot of answers coming in. Some people guessing Asif Iqbal for the previous one, but it was Intikab Alam. Yes. Right. Let's mm. move to the next question. <clears throat> yep. Question number six: Which venue hosted India's first home Test match? Was it the Brabourne Stadium? Okay, everyone's got it right. That's right, Bombay Jamrana. This is an easy a, one, man. Yeah. A very nice, lovely ground to check out, just next to the Azad Maidan. Yep. Also, nice lunch I may add. I've had the <laughs> having lunch over there. Only yeah. that is what time. I would love love more. You know, <laughs> the food part, right? <laughs> you know, looking at the age we are in, I think looking at the age we are in, you know, we might enjoy lunch more than playing the whole day, but. <laughs> <laughs> I still enjoy playing, playing, and 
a lot of them getting bombay jhumkana right a lot of bombay yeah. people including mohit chaudhary rajendra suresh ben and getting it right so bombay people know their cricket they yeah, know their bombay cricket well they know their cricket well now let's move to the next question <laughs> yeah what are the best figures by an indian in an odi 6 for 4 Six for twelve, six for twenty-three, or six for twenty-five. I know this one. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. Six for four. Sunil Guess Joshi. Who? Sunil Joshi. No, six for no. four. No, it was Robert. Sorry, Stuart Binney. Stuart Binney. Sorry, Stuart Binney. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Stuart Binney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuart Binney yeah. again. I got Bangladesh. confused. Yeah, 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 yeah. And six for twelve was uh, Anil Kumble in the Hero Cup Hero final. Cup. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Nehra in the World Cup against England, and six for twenty-five was Kuldeep Yadav. Against England at Nottingham two years ago. Yep, yep. Oh, so man. now you are the only when you got it right, and when you people like getting people like getting slump to a ball, you know, is coming in. Mm. <laughs> now when you are ah. catching up, Mahesh, Yogesh, you got to watch. You got to watch it now. Yeah, and we've yep. got to move to the next question. Question number eight. Which of these Australian bowlers did Sachin Tendulkar replace as a foreign player at Yorkshire in 1992? Oh, which of these Australian bowlers? That's right. It is Craig wow. McDermott. McDermott injured himself before the before the season, and which is why Sachin Tendulkar was signed up. And mm. in fact, interestingly, he was signed up here at the Dadoji Kondev Stadium in Pune. Yep. Vishal yep. wasn't he the first Yorkshire player, uh, the first player by Yorkshire to sign an international overseas? First foreign player, player yes. Yeah. But, mm. So Gary Sobers played a few uh, exhibition games for Yorkshire in the 60s and 70s. They don't count as official games, but he did represent them. But those were exhibition matches. Hmm. Mr. Sobers right. was an exhibition wherever he went, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great player, great player. Now moving on, next one. Let's see, Venu. Venu has caught up. Oh. I'm coming yes, back. I'm <laughs> dropping down after getting answers right. I need to get question off. nine. Do you all remember who captained India in the Under-19 World Cup 2008? Who was the coach of that Indian team? Easy. That's right. It was Dab Watmore. Hmm. Watmore was the Bangladesh coach until 2007. Later, he was given charge for the junior side. Although a lot of people expected him to take charge of the senior side. Hmm. Right. I. But you know I. I either need a uh, question okay. number 10 what is significant about sir frank warrell day oh man sir frank warrell day that's a tough one oh that's right it is a blood donation camp that is held at the eden gardens can one of you tell me why or someone from the audience can comment why I can see Mohit has got it. Yes, tell me. Yep, Mohit. Mr. Contractor now. got injured, and um, something related to that. It was yes, that's right. So, Mr. Nari Contractor was injured in a tour game in 1962 at Barbados when he was hit on the head by a bouncer yes, by Charles Griffith. When he was taken to hospital, blood was needed to be donated, and mm-hmm. Sir Frank Warrell, being the West Indies captain and also was there in Barbados, led the drive. to donate blood and that played a big role in saving mr contractor's life mm. and as you know it was those were very tense moments for mr contractor and the indian team a surgeon was flown in from trinidad so that mr contractor can be relieved of all his pain and fortunately we still have him and he survived that so a story that really took the heart and yeah. eden gardens So CAB celebrates that every year as a blood donation drive in honor of Mr. Uh, Mr. Frank, Sir Frank Warren, rather. That's so you're amazing, a, amazing piece of insight. That yeah, very good, very good. And then I think you know it's is the incidents like this uh, that show why India and West Indies actually get along so well in terms mm. of you know the cricketing culture and everything. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, that liking and that closeness between the two cricketing nations has only strengthened after the IPL. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You can see the friendships that are really there. Now moving, moving on. Here are the scores. Mahesh is leading. Yogesh mm. is second, and Benu is here, a, a third with eight nine eight three points. Moving on to question number eleven. Mahela Jayawardene, the great Sri Lankan batsman, has eleven centuries at this Test venue. 
Easy to right. read. Easy That's question. Easy. <laughs> the SSC Colombo, he's got seven. He's got seven centuries at ball, in fact. So we are getting closer to the end of power play one. Moving mm. on to question number 12, we'll have a proper roundup of the scores then. Yep. Question number 12. Who was the only test cricketer born in Afghanistan before the country made its debut in the format in 2018? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I think it is. Oh, right. wow. We got it right. <laughs> it is Salim Durani. In yeah. fact, if, you, if I can tell you a bit, I was just reading a column earlier. Salim Durani was not exactly born in Kabul. In fact, he was born in on the road between Kabul and Karachi. So wow. the exact spot where he's born is not known because his family hailed from Karachi, but his father was posted or his, they had moved for the time being to Kabul. Wow. So it is really not known, but for all purposes, everyone acknowledges him as the mm. first Afghanistan born test cricketer. Interestingly, his father stayed on in Pakistan in Karachi after partition. Salim Durani stayed in India and his father, Abdul Aziz Durani, was the coach of the great Hanif Muhammad. Interesting. Oh, wow. You know, uh, this is, you know, this is, this is something that's, that's really uh, amazing because, you know, the man who was born on the road between Karachi and Kabul went on to win the Indian hearts with the way he hit sixes. Yep. Exactly. Six on demand. Six on demand. On Everyone demand. talks about the six on demand, but what about the two wickets he took in the Trinidad test that so India was, won in 1971? Oh, so yes. Was one oh, of them. Yeah. oh Absolutely. wow. And that turned the game in India's favor. So wow. these contributions do keep Prince Salim Durani, as he was called, alive in the Indian cricket memory and will always be. Gentlemen, moving on to the next question. <clears throat> yep. Question number 13. Which of these cricketers has never played a test match for India? Dinesh Mongia, Robin Singh, R. Vinay Kumar, or Sarandeep Singh? That's right. Dinesh Mongia has played more than 50 ODIs for India, mm -hmm. hasn't played a test match. Yep. 159 against Zimbabwe being his highest score? Yes, at Guwahati. In Guwahati. Yep. Yep. And he was also part of 2003 World Cup, wasn't he? Yep. He was. He was. Moving on. What rare feat did Vijay Shankar achieve during the 2019 World Cup? Replacing Raidu, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's nasty. Let me tell you, that is nasty. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. I don't know if you needed any 3D glasses to answer yeah. that question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, so we have these are the scores. I think now we uh, we are coming to the last question of the power play. This is yeah. Mahesh at 15,602 points. Yogesh is second with 14,877 and Benu is third with 13213 points. I'm waiting for the. I'm like Dhoni. Really well. he, he's going to for the slog over. I'm like Dhoni, guys. I'm like Dhoni, taking the game deep. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> now moving on to the next Benu, one. Benu, which Dhoni are you? This guy has traveled all over the world to coach teams, but which team has he not coached in international cricket? Mickey Arthur. That's right. Yep. He hasn't coached the West Indies. He's yep. now a coach of Sri Lanka. So, but yes, he's coached South Africa, <clears throat> Australia's coach, and Pakistan's coach, most famously winning the 2017 Champions Trophy. And these are the scores at the end of the power play one. So it is 17, not 42 for Mahesh. He's leading the pack. Yogesh is second with 16,260 16, points. And Venu is third with 14,546 points. So that is the end of the power play one. Now it comes power play two. But before that, as we know, <coughs> I have to ask three questions to the audience. Wow. Audience, get ready. I'm oh. actually you are in the zone. Okay, now this is your drinks break, so you're not allowed to face these deliveries. Okay, let's have the a drink. The audience here. gets to face these deliveries. You can have your water breaks, you can do everything now. Google it. Can Google some more information. <laughs> can I back? Can I back someone to win this? You can back anyone you want, but first let me throw out the question. <laughs> first question <laughs> for you, audience. Yuvraj Singh holds the record for the fastest 15 T20 internationals. We all know when it happened. 
Hmm. Tell me the exact number of balls that it took for him to get that 50, and it's still a record. The exact number of balls Yuvraj Singh took to get the fastest 50 in T20 internationals. Let's have the answers coming in our comments. We've had quite a few comments of late. I mean, hmm. with a lot of our questions. No. Question answers coming in for 17, 15. When are we going to get it right? I, nobody answers anything. Yeah. Ishan Bale has done it. That's right. Now moving on to Ishan Bale, Jaskaran Gautam. Six sixes in an over helping him get to the 50. And now second question. Eden Park in Auckland has hosted two World Cup semi-finals. It has hosted two World Cup finals in another sport. Name the sport. Oh. Two World Cup semi-finals, we know the first one was in 1992 World Cup when yeah. Pakistan beat New Zealand thanks to Inzama Ulhaq's great heroics and a fantastic innings. And then in 2015, New Zealand went on to beat South Africa. That's right. The answer is right. Very good, Rugby, yes. 1987 World Cup and the 2011 World Cup finals played over there. Moving on to question number three. Now, this is a bit of a googly. Name the Indian opener who played in a test match at Centurion in 2001, <coughs> but the test status for that game was withdrawn. That is why this man has never represented India in an official test match. This opener. That, that's a that tough one. But he <laughs> never has represented India in a test match because test status for that game was withdrawn because of the whole Mike Dennis affair. Name mm. that hope now. Interesting. Nisha, you are ruthless. Let me tell you, you are ruthless. <laughs> a bit of a googly, shall I say? Or a dusra? Oh, so yeah. dusra. oh my god, he's got that. Yeah, Arunesh, well done. He's got that. Brilliant. Yeah, Arunesh got it right. Oh, well man. done. That is amazing. Connor Williams, yes, that's yeah. right. Just the spelling was wrong, otherwise the answer is correct. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And now, now, those were the three questions for this round. Now we move to power play two. So mm. let me give the sig signal for power play two. And remember, you've got to knock the ball around now. Mm. Questions get a little more tricky. A little more tricky. And let me see how you get those right. Okay. Moving on to question number 16. And again, looking at the points, Mahesh is leading the pack. Yogesh is second. And Benu is third. That's the scoreboard. Now moving on to question number 16. Are you ready? Gentlemen, we are ready to go. Yep. Let's rock and roll. Question number 16. Brendan McCullum signed off from Test cricket with this feat in his last Test appearance. Quite an entertaining and great batsman for New Zealand. Fastest Test centuries in terms of balls faced. Yes, he got a century of 54 balls, beating the record by Viv Richards of 56 balls. And who else got a century in 56 balls, gentlemen? Uh, Azharuddin Misbah, 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 yeah. I have a question. Is Venu yes. Dhoni of uh, the earlier uh, age or the later part of his career? No. You will find that out is, today. That, that, you know. <laughs> that is for him to decide. Now we'll find out today. <laughs> who dismissed Sachin Tendulkar in his last test innings? Whoa, I know this. That's right. It is nursing Deonarine. Calling by Gentle off spin, and the yeah. catch was taken by Darren Sammy. 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 And Sammy, out of respect, remember, did not celebrate the wicket. He yeah. just sat quietly, and that shows the <laughs> kind of sportsmanship that Sammy had as a captain. Yes. He Shane, Shillingford, also. <laughs> Shane Shillingford dismissed, in fact, dismissed him in his penultimate test innings. And Shane Shillingford is also Sachin Tendulkar's last test wicket. Yep. Yep. Correct. Wow, that's a good one. That's a good one, yeah. Right. Oh. 
Yogesh Kashinipit Mahesh Venu is still playing with the I run rate. Faster broadband. Yeah, is the internet <laughs> is the internet speed better in UK and India? I'm I'm kind of thinking now. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. But anyway, moving on to the next question. Question number eighteen. Who was South Africa's first captain in international cricket after readmission? It's an easy question, yet a lot of people can get it wrong. That's right. It was Clive Rice. We captained South Africa on, in three ODIs in India. Hmm. Then they were readmitted to international cricket. Yep. And in fact, Kepler Vessels took over for the 1992 World Cup. Hmm. Correct. Right. Question number 19. The 1987 World Cup was held in India, but who sponsored the tournament? That's right. It was called as the Reliance, Reliance World Cup. Cup. Yep. Who sponsored the first three tournaments? Prudential. 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 That's right. Prudential on uh, sponsored the World Cup. Yep. 92 was Benson and Hedges. 96 yep. was Wills. And from 99 onwards, they've had different sponsors, but at the same time. They have also kept the name as the ICC Cricket World Cup. Yeah, correct, correct. Yep. Moving on to the next question. Mm-hmm. Which of the following is true about the first ICC knockout held in 1998? It is the precursor to the ICC Champions Trophy. It was known as the ICC knockout. In fact, in 1998, it was called the Wills International Cup. Yes, I want to see now who got it right. Bangladesh. Bangladesh did not compete in that tournament. There Very good. Eight, eight teams played that tournament. Bangladesh did not compete in that tournament. Yeah. In fact, also the interesting thing is that Sachin Tendulkar started the tournament with a hundred and forty, one hundred and forty-one knock against Australia. Australia. India yeah. lost to West Indies in the semi-final. Semi-final. Hmm. South Africa won their only only international trophy. event at the highest level. That's yep. right. Yeah, yep. that is. Yep. But okay. South Africa won an ICC event after that. Which was that? Oh, Commonwealth. Commonwealth. No. That's not the ICC, ICC right? event. ICC event. ICC event. Okay. Um, any Champions Trophy? No. They no. haven't won a Champions Trophy. They have. This was the Champions Trophy, the precursor to that. South Africa have won the 2014 Under-19 World Cup. Oh! Under the captaincy of Aidan Makrel. Wow! That's nice. interesting. One. Uh-huh. As Venu, as Venu hits the six of this ball, Mahesh and Yogesh choose to block it. <laughs> striking distance. Now he's at striking distance from us. Now this is in striking distance. Yes, audience. Slow one approaching. Because when part A two ends, there are three more questions for you. Yep. Question number twenty-one. <clears throat> Which of these teams did Kenya famously beat at the 2003 World Cup? That's right. It is Sri Lanka. The Obuya brothers starring in that game. I want to. I want to. <laughs> yeah. Faster internet. Faster internet. Faster internet. <laughs> Audience, I hope you also got it right because that's something that's really working very well. Uh, with the questions that we are getting, or rather the answers that we are getting, it's great interaction. Sri Lanka were the team that was beaten. In yeah. fact, what happened was that Kennedy or Tino, one of the three Obuya brothers, got a 50 while they were batting, and later Collins Obuya got five wickets. David Obuya, I don't think, featured in that game. Hmm. Interesting. Moving on. Next question number 22. Bhuvneshwar Kumar picked a wicket. Of his first ball in ODIs, who was the batsman? Professor. It is the professor Muhammad Hafiz. First ball in Chennai. Remember, India were in dire state straits in that game. M S Dhoni getting an important hundred, and then as we remember, how Muhammad Hafiz left that ball with Bhuvneshwar Kumar getting that trademark in swing and just knocking the stumps off. Yep. India did not win the game, but nevertheless, it was a very good match to watch. Yeah, bring back Gooey, bring back Gooey. Yep. In fact, now we've got the scores here. Venu is on a streak of twelve. He's ramping up, gentlemen. You've got to be careful, Mahesh. Yogesh, you're not that far behind, but you've got mm-hmm. to be careful. Question number twenty-three. 
cricket was first played at the Asian Games in 2010. Who won the men's gold medal? Oh. Who won the men's gold medal? Taking a guess. Oh, is it Bangladesh? Interesting. That's right. Bangladesh won the gold medal. They won the gold medal by by beating Afghanistan in the final. I thought that Sri Lanka would have won it. Yeah. No, in fact, in fact, I think Sri Lanka won the. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it was Pakistan who won the bronze medal, and mm -hmm. Sri Lanka was fourth. In in 2014, when the Commonwealth, when the Asian Games was played again, the mm. gold medal this time was not won by Bangladesh. In fact, I think it was Sri Lanka who won it. and uh, i'm not too sure but definitely afghanistan was in the final i should know this mm. because i've read it several times it's a folly i don't remember this well done but, to guys who got it right man yeah <laughs> it's really right bangladesh yeah. now let me ask the audience and you guys who was the captain of the bangladesh team who won that gold medal for them mushfiq no was a front line player a player we know very well and whom we've enjoyed watching Shakib No, it was Murtaza. No, it was Muhammad Ashraful. Oh, Muhammad Ashraful. Oh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. No one gets What it a great right. Memory of his century against Australia. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. Now moving on to question twenty-four. This famous cricketer shares his name with Syed Kirmani, the Indian wicketkeeper. Zahir. Everyone got it right. Yep. Can someone give me Syed Kirmani's full name? Ah, that is Indian wicketkeeper. Syed Muzabad Hussain Kirmani. Correct. And and Zahir Abbas, the great batsman, is Syed Zahir Abbas Kirmani. Hmm. Mm. Yep. Interesting. This was a really good question, though. Not many yeah. people would know this. And in fact, I don't know if Suresh is still with us uh, live on this uh, stream. But the other day when we were having a live chat, we were discussing how Zaheer Abbas used to score tons and tons of runs against India. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God, he would just not get out, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, Maybe he had a bank account for runs from India or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> guys, repatriate, you know, those runs from that account or something. Guys, hmm. now the last question for the power play. Two <clears throat> audience, get ready. There will be three more questions for you after this. Yes. Last question of power play two. Which team won the gold at the Commonwealth Games 1998 cricket event? That's right. It is South Africa. What? South Africa beat, yes, South Africa beat Australia in the final. Hmm. Imagine the run of form they had. They won the Commonwealth Games in '98. They won the Wells International Cup in '98. But they beat Australia, I think, in the finals, right? Yeah. Correct. They beat Australia in the final. Yeah. Imagine, imagine if they had just beaten Australia at Edgbaston a year later. Yeah. Oh. It would have been different. But they would have paid this for that, I'm sure. Of course, any day. But <laughs> another interesting thing about the Commonwealth Games that year is that. India and Pakistan <coughs> were playing a series in Toronto, so mm. they had to send two separate teams, one to Toronto and one yeah. to, uh, to Malaysia for the Commonwealth Games. Mm. And what happened over there is that after India were knocked out, they flew Sachin Tendulkar and a few members to Toronto to play that series. And on landing, he scored a fifty there, which mm. only, as we say, Sachin Tendulkar things. This was a really good question, Nishad, because all the guys who are getting all the answers right have got this one wrong on the audience. Everyone right? getting it. Australia, yeah. <laughs> South Africa, who yeah. won the medal under Sean Pollock's captaincy. Yeah, yeah. Now that is the end of power play. Yogi is on top. Number two. Coming closer. Coming closer now. Let us now move to the slog overs. Now, but before but that. Think, Yeah, the questions for the audience, right now. Yeah. We have the questions for the audience. Audience, you can get ready for the questions. These are exclusively for you. Tea Again, break. Questions, get them right. It's a drinks break or a tea break for <laughs> our participants. You get these answers right, and you have a chance to be in place of Venu, Mahesh, and Yogesh on my screen, and I will challenge you on our next episode.
Question number four for the audience. I think this should be an easy one. Ryan Tent the starter played for which IPL team? Venu Mahesh Logesh, mute on all of you. Let me see some answers. Ryan Tent the starter played for which IPL team? 2011 onwards. Yeah, we've got the first answer. Gentlemen, don't repeat it because I will announce the answers later. Moving Correct. on to the second question. Now, today on social media, we all have been hearing about the anniversary of Rahul Dravid and, uh, and Saurabh Ganguly's test debut. Saurabh Ganguly got himself onto the honors board with a century. But how much did Rahul Dravid get? The exact score. I want the exact score. Good question, Nisha. Very good question. Very topical. The exact question. score. I want the exact oh, score. Oh, man. <laughs> the exact score Rahul Dravid got. That's right. You got a, a right answer. Now, the last one. This is my googly. In fact, if you know, if you have been following <clears throat> women's cricket in recent times, you should know this. For Indian women in ODIs, which player has got the highest score? For India in ODIs, in women's ODIs, which player has got the highest score? Interesting. Let me see the answers coming through. Harshan is saying Harman. No, that's not right. We've got a right answer. So now let me uh, let me give you all the answers of all the audience questions before we Correct. move on to the slog overs, the exciting Correct. phase. Yuvraj Singh got a 50 of 12 balls. The first question that I asked. The second question was Eden Park Auckland has hosted two rugby World Cup finals. The Indian opener who played at Centurion was Connor Williams. Ryan Tender Scatter has played for KKR. A lot of you got it right. The highest score for Indian women in ODIs is by Deepti Sharma, 188. Dinesh Anand has got wow. the exact score, 188. Wow. Everyone think it's Harman Preet Kaur. Her 170 odd was a very, very good inning. <clears throat> Probably mm. changed Indian women's cricket, but it was not the highest score. Mm. Subhajit also got it right. A lot of them yeah. getting it right. But yeah. Arman Preet Kaur was close. She doesn't have the high score. Mitali Raj would be someone we would suspect, but no. Mm -hmm. And also, Rahul Dravid got the exact score of 95, missing out, edging Chris Lewis behind the wicket and yeah. missing out. But he did get on the honors board in 2011 when everybody else was failing around him. I wish we had that question, man. We were itching to go for it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I audience, like, audience, thank you so much for participating. <laughs> now, we will be getting in touch with the audience as to who will be with us on Crickwit episode 2, presented by Cherry and Timber Talk. Now, we are moving to the slog overs. Get your long handles out, gentlemen. Get the big hands out. Yeah, flex your muscles because you've got to send them high into the stands and the distance as well because you get double the points for every answer you get correct. Again, faster you get the answer, the more the points you get. Mm -hmm. So right now, as we start the slog overs, Mahesh is leading the pack with 26,789 points. Yogesh is second with 25,899 and Venu is third with 25,355 Getting ready for his Dhoni act, I think. Now, let's see. Moving on to the slog overs. Question number 26. Double the points. What is Kurtley Ambrose's autobiography famously titled? A great bowler. Oh, everybody hits a six. I think that was a full toss. I'll not yeah. give any more full tosses. <laughs> Time to talk. And yeah. it is because when he was a player, he wasn't very fond of interviews and used to famously say, curtly talk to no man. And when he thought of writing an autobiography, Time to Talk was what he named it. And gentlemen, here's the book. Wow. Whoa. Awesome. How many Fantastic. pages is that book? This book, let me tell you, is 
271 pages with the last few pages where he's picking the batch, the players that he's loved watching around this time, mm -hmm. which includes Sunil Gavaskar, Graham Gooch, Jack Palace, Sachin Tendulkar, Ricky Ponting, Steve Waugh, Adam Gilchrist, Richard Hadley, Vaseem Akram, Shane Vaughan, Glenn McGrath, Ian Botham, and David Gower. Ah, David Gower. The reason Gower. why I asked how many pages was, you know, I was thinking for a man who literally did not speak on the ground, maybe when he decided to speak, it was like 10 pages or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's quite a good read. It, it's yeah. quite honest and upfront. It's not obviously very... It's not an abrasive book by any means, not mm. rubbing anyone the wrong way, yeah. but honest and to the point if you read the book. That's yeah. how he played his cricket, man. That's yeah. why I think he's so well loved by everyone. That he Absolutely. Just, yeah, bold, just did a job. Brilliant so bowler. Fantastically well. Brilliant bowler. And I think still cricket fans do love him and do watch all those videos, particularly yeah. the spell of 7 for 1. And a great yes. dancer and a great bass guitarist as well. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No, guys, everyone. With hitting those sixes, it's oh. neck and neck, ladies and gentlemen, getting mm. exciting. Question number 27, double the points. This is the one. Shiv Narayan Chandarpal's ODI debut was the last international appearance for this great player. Last ODI, last international appearance, in fact, for this great player. Who got it right? Look at the expression. It is Kapil Dev. Kapil Dev bowed out at his home ground, Faridabad, in October 1994. And what had also happened was that it was Chandarpal's debut. Chandarpal did not bat or bowl in that game. Mm. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Now no, this was this was this was an edge that went to the boundary. I, I slogged it blind. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It board. doesn't matter as long as the runs come. Yes. You've got. You know, I, I mean, look at look at this. Madan Mohan, Shantanu, Arunesh, Bhash, Mankar getting it right. In fact, I must give special credit to all of them because yeah. they've been following and they've been getting a lot of answers right. Yes. So full credit yeah. to these gentlemen yeah. and. Yes, this is the score. Yogesh taking the lead, 29705. Mm. Mahesh, little bit behind. Venu, three deliveries to go. Yes, Dinesh, I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, question number 28. I should be a fan. <laughs> Who became the second Indian bowler to take a hat trick at the Come on, I know this. Come on. Against Afghanistan in 2019. Ah, I know this one. Yeah. Everybody getting it right. It yeah. is Mohammed Shami. Mohammad Shami getting it right. A lot of cheering chance for Venu. Come on, Venu. Let's see how Venu's got Thanks, a lot of crowd support. Thanks, guys. I have a lot of Venu. I think it is Dhoni fans. You know, it's typical <laughs> Dhoni brigade. They're now looking, uh, they're seeing Dhoni in Venu. So that's why I, mean. I was I was so smart to create my own brand, you see. <laughs> uh, now, gentlemen, okay. Last two questions. Yep. Let me see. Now I'm quite sure these may I will try to get those Yorkers in. If yeah. I miss my length, maybe you'll be able to hit it for six. If yeah. I don't, and I get it right, I think your stumps are under serious threat. I'm ready with the uh. thin scoop. <laughs> now, this is where it gets interesting. This is a mm -hmm. puzzle. You've got to arrange this chronologically. Mm -hmm. Arrange the following in order of their test debuts. Ricky Ponting, Shiv Narayan Chandarpal, VVS Lakshman, Rahul Dravid. Okay. You get more time to answer this. Four men who emerged in the mid-1990s went on to play some exemplary cricket for over a decade. Some of them even going on to play more than a decade. Come on, come on. I think I got this. Venu, there's no point in putting pressure like this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, bring it on. <laughs> this is like the ball that's in the air, and we don't know whether it's going to go for a boundary six or it's going to uh, get caught on the ropes. Right. Oh, yes. 
yes, 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 yes. Chander Paul, Ponting, Rahul Dravid, VVS Lakshman. Mm -hmm. Chander Paul made his debut in 1994, Ponting in 95, Dravid in June 1996, and Lakshman in November 1996. That's awesome, the correct order. Yes. I thought I wrote it that way. I don't know. Yeah, Mahesh, Mahesh, watch out. I'm coming on top. Yogi now, the last, last question. Yeah. Okay. Gentlemen, last ball. It's getting tighter. I would I, I don't think all three results are possible. Neither do I think neither do I think Pritish is the ultimate winner because this is obviously <laughs> no cliches around here. And audience, get ready. Participants, get ready. This is the last, last question. <clears throat> Question number 30, double the points. Basim Jafar achieved this distinction very early in his career. A double century on first class debut, a debut in a Ranji final, two centuries on first class debut, or a triple century in only second first class game. Hmm. Interesting. I think I've got this. Man who dominated so. Ranji Trophy, oh, yeah. everyone got it right. Triple Whoa. century in first class game against Saurashtra in Rajkot, where a lot of runs are scored. And as we know, he established himself for years and years and thrilled audiences in domestic cricket, played a few good innings for India as well. And I think he was one of my favorite batsmen to watch just oh, for yeah. the of the way he drove those balls on the rise through the offside. Mm. Right, drum roll, drum roll. I don't have it right now. Let's see. This okay. is the third. Mahesh is third with 32,315. Venu is second with 32,341. Well played, guys. Oh, 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 <laughs> this was a challenge for Cherry and Timber Talk people. Yogesh, what? did Yogesh get the questions before us? Yeah, Mahesh. Remember the name. <laughs> Remember, Remember the name. For <laughs> challenge, gentlemen, Yogesh is the winner of episode one, yeah. and we've had great participation from the audience today. Yeah. I've been really, I've really enjoyed watching or playing the quiz with you, gentlemen, Venu, Mahesh, and Yogesh. We've yeah. had a lot of answers coming in from our audience. And what yeah. we are going to do is we are going to get them on our quiz show next time. Yeah. So, gentlemen, please keep yourself free on Saturday evenings because we will be interested to have you on this. You can be next like Yogesh winning the quiz. <clears throat> and questions, uh, and in fact, uh, now congratulations coming in. <laughs> Everybody is looking forward to the next episode. Congratulations to Yogesh. Mahesh and Venu playing well. Okay, uh, Venu not quite getting in the pace of the innings, rather. Yeah. See, mm. even even mm. even a Dhoni is human. Man. Even a Dhoni is human. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, it has been a pleasure. Siddharth but it was us. a very close game. It was very interesting. Very close game. Till the last telling us that he has enjoyed this quiz. Arunesh, thank you for joining. You got a lot of those answers right. Vivekanand Zoshi, thank you. Manish Vaidya, thank you so much. Anil Bandekar, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We Rajendra Poduwal also saying good show. Dr. Nilesh Mehta also joining in. Siddharth Gulati, Bhash Mankad, you know, a lot of people joining in. I'm sorry if I miss out on a few names, but we are getting those comments. We have been thrilled to have you all here. It has been fun to have this quick wit episode number one. Yes. And now. Fabulous. Fabulous. When I come up with episode number two, these gentlemen will be helping me. Now that they've had a taste of this episode, they will be helping me curate the future episodes. And we will also have participants from the audience joining in. So until next time, thank you so Nishan. much. Nishan, yes. very well done. Nishan, very Nishan, well done. Well done. Uh, Post-match presentation kuch hai ke nahi? Ha, ha. You don't get anything, Yogi. Well, sorry. I think I think Nisha forgot to mention this was an exhibition match. <laughs> the real deal is next week. Nevertheless, what we've seen was an excellent exhibition of quizzing. But in the end, is coming your way, Yogesh. They're sending you two dinner coupons. You know who you go out with, right?
I know about those coupons. You can keep them. <laughs> guys, guys. Okay, okay. Anyways, thank you so much. We've got thank to end the show right here. Audience, thank you for joining in. Well played, guys. Okay, yes, just, just one thing before we close, uh, Nishad. So next week, uh, guys, how it will be structured is first, we will sorry, be sorry, having... Sorry, yeah. I was to say, yeah. uh, Venu will tell you how it will be structured next week because yes. as they know, they host a wonderful show called Cherry and Timber Talk. It's great yep. partnering. I've been a guest also a few times. They will tell you. So yep. I leave the floor open for Venu. Sure. So guys, uh, first of all, thank you once again, Nishad. Excellent concept, excellent show. And... To the audience who participated, really can't thank you guys enough. You guys were wonderful. We enjoyed everything, you know, uh, which which was uh, on the show today. And next week, what we're going to do is uh, the first half hour would be for Cherry and Timber Talk. And the topic, again, you can note it down and you can also participate in this topic. It would be the best fourth innings 100 uh, scored in a test yes. match. You can pick your choice. You can also comment while we are speaking. And after that, we'll go on to Nishad with his quiz con uh, concept. Once again, quick quit uh, episode two. Uh, how we will pick the uh, participants is we will look at all the answers that came in today. We will look at all the comments as well. And we'll pick three lucky guys to come on the screen. And that's how we'll conduct the show next week. Once again, keep participating. Uh, circulate this video to your friends if you want them to participate as well. Ask them to join uh, our Facebook page like our subscribe our channel and you know that's how you can participate so thank you once again over to you nishad one minute before everything is done i've got to roll this out yogesh oh. is the show. Oh. Yogesh, that's, is. Your, that's your gift that's your post-match yes. gift all right. It's worth a hundred million dollars. You can take a screenshot, put I it on to, your. <laughs> I need to screenshot this. You're right. Green screen. Green anyway, screen. guys. Okay. This is okay. a historic okay. moment now because we've got it's uh it's now moved. We've moved. we've had a very good show, yeah. and we thank our audience. So yeah. thank you everyone once again. Until next time, you could be a lucky participant on this show. Goodbye. Bye bye. Goodbye. See you guys. Bye bye. Thank you. Yes. Bye bye.